Episode 32. This episode brought to you by ReelsandTackle.com, your family-owned online tackle store. Welcome to the Telltale Fisherman Podcast, where avid anglers share the story of their best fishing day ever to inspire yours. Now it's time for another epic adventure. So here's your host, John Woodson. Okay, welcome to the show. Today's guest is a very special guest. It is Don Freshy from the World Fishing Network show, Sport Fishing on the Fly. Don, it's great to have you here today. Hey, thank you. Very uh, excited to be part of the podcast. We're, we're really excited to have you here. And um, I, I just thought we might start off for, for those who maybe haven't seen your show before. Uh, could you just give them a little, you know, kind of a quick overview of, of you know, what the show is all about and your focus and, you know, the waters you cover, fish you catch, you know, those kinds of things. Sure, sure. Quickly go over it. You know, Sport Fishing on the Fly is now in its 23rd season. It will be on the air. All different networks, Outdoor Channel, World Fishing Network, all across British Columbia. And really, it's all about fly fishing. That's all we do. We are strictly fly fishermen. You know, we started uh, way back about uh, in my childhood, really, you know, 40 years ago. And that's what we wanted to promote. It was more of the, the conservation side of things. You know, make sure you're catching the leaves, you know, barbless hooks. Um, just the proper etiquette on the water. And fly fishing was a really good fit. And we try to key all through British Columbia. So British Columbia, Canada is a beautiful place to fish. We've got, you know, outstanding trophy lakes and rivers. And, you know, we couldn't be in a better part of the world for, uh, for the pristine nature. So that's really all the show's all about. A couple of guys out having fun, fly fishing. You know, the show does, uh, I'm the host. And we have my brother, Dale Frefty, that joins us along uh, with Brian Chan, well-known fisheries biologist, uh, fly fisherman. Yeah, you, well, you said fun, and and that's something that you know me as a viewer, having watched your show over the years, certainly comes through to me. You know, I can tell you guys just have a lot of fun out there fly fishing. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah, we have well, a lot that's of fun yeah, out there. and it and it shows. It definitely shows through um, in in your episodes. Um, it, it just wanted to ask you real quick about the different species you catch generally. Yeah, so, you know, we, like I said, we key again in British Columbia, but we always do a tropical trip. So we'll go down to uh, somewhere tropical like Costa Rica, Cuba, anywhere where we can catch, you know, tarpon, bonefish, snook, permit, you know, all those tropical inland species. And then, of course, we key on, we have, you know, still world-class salmon, you know, for chinook, for coho, for sockeye, along with steelhead. And then, of course, the lakes, we've got all the trophy rainbows, we've got cutthroat trout, bull trout, we've got dollies, we've got lake trout, pike. Um, you know what? And we're even bass. Probably the only fish we haven't fished for is, uh, you know, like shark and things like that, or the big marlin. Everything else we've fished for. Yeah, well, uh, may, maybe we, uh, we'll get to see you down here in Florida, down my way sometime, to do the shark fishing. I've seen a couple guys doing that shark on the fly. That looks pretty wild. And that looks pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know how long you hang on to it for, but that's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun for a few seconds, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Wow. Well, you know, you mentioned um, that you've been fly fishing since your childhood, forty years ago. Uh, I, I'd like for you to just tell us a little bit about, you know, how you got fishing and and you know how you fished when you when you grew up and kind of take us from from your start to you know how all the way up to how you got to be a, a tv host yeah sure you know we it started with my dad you know my dad was your classic i come from an italian family so everything you caught you mm-hmm. got at that time i was taught from four years old that you know we'd go out and we'd fish the local creek i'd take my worm take my hook take my bobber and just catch fish in the local creek and you know take them home eat them do the whole thing that's the way we were taught so we started fishing with bobbers and lake and with spinning outfits. I mean, that's all they had, really. I didn't even know about fly fishing. Mm-hmm. And we did a lot of trolling. So we'd take out those big willow leaves and all the rest and troll for landlock sockeye, which are kokanee up here in uh, British Columbia. So we'd do a whole bunch of that and troll around for big rainbow. And then, you know, I was about 13 years old and we're on a lake. And my dad, there's a gentleman out there and he's got the big snivy whiplash mustache. It's really cool. He's got this <laughs> big whiplash. His name was Riga Rizzotti. I never forget the name. Riga Rizzotti. Hmm. And he's fly fishing. And I asked my dad, as we're trolling around, I'm like, Dad, okay, he's catching fish over there. 
And, you know, and it looks really cool. And he says, oh, don't worry, they're all small fish. We're, we're out here, and we may only catch one, but we're after big fish. And after I saw that, when I was 13 and when I was 14, I said, i got to have one. I've got to, i got to start fly fishing. So really, Rudy Rosati got me into the sport just by watching this gentleman yeah. catch fish, and I'd never seen it before. And then later in life, uh, I went to a friend in my early 20s, so I got to pick up the fly rods, uh, you know, the local Canadian Tire Special. Started fly fishing, learning how to tie my own flies, self-taught. And then a buddy of mine was doing work for a local TV network. Mm-hmm. And he says, hey, you know what, do you mind if I come out and film you fishing? And then we put it on the air. We just put it up on our local shot cable. So he, I said, cool, we'll do that. So he filmed a couple of times. We'd go to a lake and I'd catch fish and talk about it. We put it on the air. And also we had this huge following on a local network saying, hey, we, we want to see more of that. So wow. the network got called and said, what are you guys going to do? And we're like, well, we can make a show and we can give it to you. So we invested a bunch of money, bought all the equipment and started producing a TV show. And at that time it was called West Kootenai Sport Fishing. That goes okay. way back. <laughs> so that was even before 23 years ago. So that was West Kootenai Sport Fishing. We did four shows essentially of West Kootenai Sport Fishing. And then after that, we got signed up by Outdoor Channel down in the States. And we called it Sport Fishing on the Fly. That's when we started, 1995. So wow. it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, it, you know, what's kind of wild about that is that was back before the days of social media or Internet or any of that kind of stuff, right? And the show still yeah. took off. How about exactly. that? Exactly. It was all of this, yeah, getting it out there on those certain channels and people really enjoyed it and uh, sponsors loved it. So we thought, hey, it makes money. We might as well keep doing it. <laughs> and, and you get to fish. And we get the fish, yeah. It turned a hobby into a business. It's uh, so everybody's dream, isn't it? So, so did you ever envision, you know, when you started picking up a fly rod, that you know that's how you were gonna spend the rest of your career hosting the TV show and, <laughs> and doing you all know, that? It's kind of funny, that. You know, when we talked to my buddy and we started doing it, it was going out flying in the original days, and he says, you know what? If we can just fish for free, imagine having that nice, beautiful sage rod or hardy reel. And we thought, wouldn't that be cool to be able to get that for free? That was our goal. <laughs> and, you know, and when we achieved that, we're like, hey, this, there's way more to it now. But that was our, that was our intention, was to be able to fish for free. Just, just to get a free a rod. <laughs> just to get free outfit and go somewhere where they would pay you to show up and just fish for free so we could actually go out and fish. And it didn't cost us anything. That was our goal. That was the overarching business idea. <laughs> Wow. And so, so here you are, what, 25 years later and been all over the world and caught all kinds of wonderful things. How about that? Yeah, and fishing for free. <laughs> not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, and and that's, not, that's not so bad either. <laughs> not so bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you, me personally, what I really like about your show is, is you make fly fishing accessible. You know, I, I feel like when I watch you on the show, it's something that's achievable. And, you know, with your on the bench segment and showing people how you tie the fly and all. I mean, is that kind of intentional, really, that you want to draw people in and, and make fly fishing accessible for them? That's the total intention of the show. I mean, we're, we are a couple of guys that just started fly fishing, and we didn't know anything. Like, really, we were learning with our fans, mm-hmm. and that's the whole intention is we're not there to preach about the sport or, you know, about what, something that we think we know more than somebody else. It's, hey, we're learning. You show us better ways to handle fish. You tell us, give us input. We'll show you how to tie a fly, and if you can show us a better technique, we're all over it, and then we'll try to show other people. So we love the feedback loop. It's again, yeah. we're learning and our fans learn and we try to get that across. And hey, here's, here's what we found out to work really well for us. Maybe this will work for you. Try it out. And we take the same back. It's like a 360 degree feedback loop. It's perfect. Yeah. And, and you know, the more fishermen I've talked to who are lifelong fishermen, they, they still say they learn every time they go out on the water. And I, I think that's right. That's the truth. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's funny how, you know, simple fishing is on one level and then so complex on another. You know, you're always learning about these <laughs> crazy little things we're chasing around the water. Well, we do it and we make it tougher on ourselves all the time, right? We think there's a better pattern, there's a better fly. And yeah, it's yep. crazy. Yeah. But it's good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, uh, along those lines, you know, uh, talking about how, you know, you make it accessible, do you have any, 
just general ad- advice or guidance for people who, you know, may tune into your show and say, wow, that looks really cool. You know, just like the guy you saw so many years ago and say, I'd, I'd like to do that. But, you know, fly fishing can be a little daunting in terms of the equipment and, you know, it's, the gear is different and everything. You know, what, what advice would you give for somebody who's kind of new but wants to get into fly fishing? Well, the beauty of uh, obviously the internet nowadays and social media is it's all accessible. So anything you want to understand or learn, you can find it online. Right. And so, you know, everything's there, right? The fly time's there, how to use the tools. So, again, I would tell anybody, recommend you go on the internet, you know, you Google what you're trying to look for. Uh, we're actually adding a whole new thing to our site uh, next year when it comes out in this, uh, it's actually January that is going to have all beginner fly time, all beginner casting through the intermediate to advanced. And we're going to go with these, you know, one or two minute clips to show everybody exactly how to do it. Just the way we were always asking. So right. that's okay. I think you got to go there. Yeah. You have to go there for sure. Right. Well, that, yeah, that, that takes care of it right there. What a, what a great resource to be able to log in and, and, and start getting it bit by bit. Yeah. And they get on the water. Of course, you, you got to get out there and practice right. and, and give it a shot, but it's easy. It's not that tough. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you, you watch some shows and it, and, and sometimes they almost make fly fishing seem mysterious and unapproachable. You know, it's almost ethereal. And, and, you know, when I, when I watch your show, I feel like, wow, you know, I, I think I could uh, go do that. You know, I've done spin casting oh, yeah. and offshore and, but you know, that's just a little un, unfamiliar to me, not having grown up and, and done that, but man, it sure looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's always fun. Yeah, and, you know, we go up and beat up the water. I always buy, you know, I bug my brother about his terrible casting. You know, he's all quick, and he's, it's not the classic fishing cast, but the guy catches a ton of fish that flies in the water. You know, so basics that get people interested in fishing is they get bored if they're not catching fish or they don't have the opportunity. But if right. he flies in the water, you're going to catch fish, and it doesn't matter how it looks. All these guys see you got to match the hatch or the fish. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the fly line has to travel in a nice, cold loop. It doesn't. The fly's got to be up. Otherwise, get it on a few feet, and you're going to catch fish. That's it, bottom line. So that's all you got to learn. And that's why we try to make it so that we're not, again, showing how tough it is to do. It's more like how easy it is to do. Right, yeah. yeah. All, all that matters is if there's a uh, fish on the other end of that line. <laughs> exactly, and you're enjoying your day. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, when we get back, Don is going to share an epic fly fishing story with us, of course. Stay tuned. As avid anglers, our mission is always fishing, but at the Telltale Fisherman, our mission is to find the most epic fishing stories from around the world, and to do that, we need your help. When you share us on social media, that's like casting a line in a new pond, lake, or ocean where the next trophy fishing story awaits. Go to tell.fish, click one of our social media icons, and help cast the net for our next inductee to the Telltale Hall of Fame. All right, we are back with Don Freshy, host of the show Sport Fishing on the Fly. And I've given him a terribly difficult assignment. I've asked him to pick uh, one of his uh, most epic days from, what, 20, 23 seasons, I guess, now? Or 40 years <laughs> yeah, of fishing? Yeah, yeah, I know this is I know this is uh, probably hard, but I'm sure it's going to be an epic uh, story for us. So, so uh, what, what do you have for us? Well, oh, geez, yeah, you're right. You know, there's so many. But yeah. <laughs> this one, uh, you know, this one was one that we were down in Florida, or not in Florida, in Cuba. So we're actually in Cuba. Okay. And we're yeah. fishing for big tarpon. So there's yeah. big tarpon rolling around. And, you know, we're, we're used to catching the, the 60 and 80 pounders down there. And you get the odd over 100, but it's very rare. Mm-hmm. And the one time, you know, and I've, so we see this one fishing. He's on the flats and he's sold. So we know he's big. Mm-hmm. And we chase him around a bit, and we're, you know, we're pulling, and we're moving around the flats. I finally, after about a half an hour, get a cast at him. He's coming across the boat, doesn't see us, kind of on the side, and he just swims over and takes the fly. So, you know, then the heart's pumping. But then when he starts running and he hit the air, you know, was, he, you know, he's over 130 pounds. It was a big, big target, like one of yeah. the biggest he's ever seen. So, you know, you're, you're in it, and then you're in that battle. And... And, you know, if you've ever caught tarpon, which I'm sure you have, mm-hmm. you're just in for an epic fight. They're going to last forever and jump. And so anyways, I got on the beach and finally worked this fish for, you know, it's, it seems like an hour. It's forever. Mm-hmm. 
and we're just getting ready. We're filming it. We've got the whole thing done. And just as we're, you know, the guy's getting out there to try to get a hold of the fish, it makes a rod, breaks my rod, and breaks me off. <laughs> so it's one of those tragic ones where, where I saw the fish, you know, he had it in his hand, we had the size, you know, we, but I never got the picture with him. So mm-hmm. it's one of those, for fly fishermen, it's one of those crushing things where you see the fish and you don't, you just want the one picture. You just want to touch it and say, I touched it or I had it, but I never did get to that. So there was one of my epic failures, I call it, that <laughs> I'll never forget. Wow. It was just, it was such a phenomenal thing. Oh, and, and you said you stalked that fish for a half hour trying to get in position? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. It would keep going across these flats where we'd see it, and then it would go on the weed beds, and then it would come back on the flat, and we, we'd move up and move back, and it just stayed there. Like, it was feeding, and it would go back and forth, and he would go up and down and every which way, and my guide was literally working his butt off to get us in the right position. We <laughs> finally did. I finally hooked him. I finally got him short, and he just... The last minute he gets off, breaks everything, breaks my rod, breaks, just, it was, I don't know, I call it beautifully tragic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. I, I, I would say more than any other fish I've ever encountered, tarpon are the absolute most frustrating, most difficult, and most uh, thrill giving when you finally catch one of, of any fish out there. I mean, is that kind of your experience? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, they go head-to-head with uh, the big steelhead that we've caught, uh, you know, other big species that you just, you know, fish of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Those big tarpon are the best. They're the most exciting fish because they're aerial, they scrap, they run, they're just supercharged, right? It's just an unreal fish to catch, and they're big. They're yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And, and it doesn't matter what size. I mean, the, the small ones are fantastic, and the big ones, I mean, holy cow, you almost don't want to catch the really big ones because they're just... <laughs> no, because you can never get them in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're the best. They're the yeah. best, for sure. They're, they're, they're my favorite fish. Sure. So, so from a from a fly fisherman's perspective, though, that's that's kind of a different level than the normal fly fishing you do, right? Talk about how you yeah. gear up differently and prepare and, and what kind of flies you have to do to, to catch a fish like that. Oh, my. If I told you how many rods I have now, I'm different <laughs> setups, people would be shocked. But I think I've got... You know, my stock plan over probably 60 rods, we have everything from one and two weights all the way up to 12 weights. Mm-hmm. And in every, you know, for every soft tip series, every soft tip series, all the, you know, everything. Because any any place we go now in preparation, yeah, you've got to be prepared. You've got to have the right reel set up. You've got to have the right amount of backing. You've got to have the proper rods to handle it. So it's a tough situation for people, normal people, I'm saying, you know, people that have to go and buy this stuff. Yeah. To get out there and experience the whole gamut, because you're never going to have, well, not never, but it takes a lot to get into those uh, those different setups. But, yeah. you know, mostly in D.C., we're using a lot of five and six-way rods, so it's pretty simple. You, you suit up for one rod or maybe two, and you're pretty well going to fish for 90% of your fish. Mm-hmm. And if you ever go remote, like, you know, somewhere tropical, you can borrow a friend's rod or you can rent something. But there's always, or they even provide you when you go somewhere with the right, right setup. So people don't really have to own them. They just have mm-hmm. to be prepared to fish for them. Yeah. Right. That's what we found, sir. As far as equipment. And do you have a, a particular favorite uh, tarpon fly you like to use? I really like, you know, my, what became my favorite was little tarpon toads. Mm-hmm. I like the red and black tarpon toad, which was really effective in the Puglisis. You know, those Puglisi flies are very effective. Okay. Uh, we didn't do a whole bunch of the uh, pillow worms. We used some of those patterns. But, you know, my for the tarpon, we always found we took those little either chartreuse, tarpon toad, or the red and black tarpon toad. Those were my two favorites. Red and black tarpon yeah. toad. Okay. I've heard yeah, purple is a, a good color for them as well. Purple we tried, but not as good down there as the red and black or the green. The chartreuse really? is really good some here still. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Really good. They didn't, they didn't refuse it. They ate it every time. <laughs> that's pretty cool. But that's the, <laughs> that's the trick with those guys is figuring out what they want because, boy, they can be finicky. They can be picky, you bet. So okay, so we've talked about your your biggest heartbreak when it comes to tarpon. I, I'm just curious if if you have a uh, your most epic uh, catch for tarpon. I mean, the one you actually got to land. What was your most memorable tarpon catch? The most memorable uh, again down in Cuba. That was uh, mm-hmm. it was probably the first time. So my first experience ever with a tarpon. So I joined my brother it was about nine years ago. 
got to Cuba. Dale was going down the year before, so I joined him, brought down the camera crew. And they said, okay, tarpon. He gave me the rundown. Never fished for him before. Mm -hmm. I've never thrown a line out of tarpon. Uh, I'm first up on the deck, so we're out rolling around. Guide is yelling at me, tarpon, 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 straight at us, you know, 12 o'clock, 40 feet. And then, and then I see this big tarpon coming straight at us at the boat, mm -hmm. straight upstream. So I just flick the fly down, the, the fish just swam over and ate it. I hook him, I land it. It's about a 70-pound tarpon. It's the first tarpon I've ever cast to or wow. ever seen. And I landed it and hooked him. And it's <laughs> on the show. It's actually one of the shows. That, that was my first tarpon I'd ever seen or cast. So to me, that was pretty lucky. Yeah, yeah, and so you're you're thinking, hey, this ain't this is not so hard, right? <laughs> oh, I thought there's nothing to it, and then I proceeded for the whole rest of the week to break five off and couldn't land one, and oh yeah, it was just a reality kicked in. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a similar uh, experience when I tried bonefish for the first time. I think my first cast hooked up, boom, landed. I'm like, wow, this is going to be a great weekend. We're going to catch <laughs> yeah. a ton. Uh, we caught one more after a lot of hours on the water. So um, there you go. It. I know. Beginner's luck. It's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes. I'm, I'm happy to use it. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm all for it too. Who's that? Oh wow. Well, before we let you go here, um, any uh, sneak peeks for what's coming up uh, on the show here in the next season? Yeah. So you know, this year we really take a big transition. So not only is our social media boost really pumped up, we're really getting a lot more social media out there. We've hired a whole new crew. So, uh, you know, I had a long-term crew that did a lot of our productions, but my main camera guy, Les Stadchuk, he got a little older. Mm -hmm. You know, he was well into his uh, late 60s and stuff. He said, you know what, I've done enough. I'm going to hang him up. Time for the young guys to step in. So we've hired a whole new camera crew. We're doing the whole show entirely now in 4K with wow. the drones, with the underwater. Everything's 4K. We invest a lot of money. And you wait until you see the new series this spring. It is I, I'm blown away. It's crystal clear. We've got slow mo. We've got drone stuff that'll blow you away. It's all in 4K. It's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah I can. I special. can say I I snuck a little peek at uh, your website for the show and saw a couple of the teasers on there with some of that aerial drone footage. Wow, it's oh, it's yeah. pretty spectacular. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. But but you want to keep the the general premise of the show the same, like we were talking about before, right? It's, Still. Yep exactly the same you know what it's a couple of guys out fishing we're having fun we're catching fish we're going to show a bunch of cool new flies but uh, we're going to throw in some extra you know just some more scenic stuff just a little more of that you know here's what here's the setup here's kind of what the river looks like and we'll go through the same stuff show will be the same yeah it's just going to look a lot nicer that's all <laughs> right right well that's incredible and i'm really looking forward to uh this next season and uh seeing some of the great things to come right on that yeah, should be good all right. Well, Don, that was uh, fantastic talking to you today. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing some tarpon heartbreak and, and some tarpon love with us. <laughs> yeah, I knew you could relate to that for sure. And it was my pleasure. Yeah, it was great. If you're new to podcasts, there's a simple way to get our latest episodes delivered straight to your mobile device. For iOS, just click on the purple podcast icon. For Android, Click on the play music icon, then search for Telltale Fisherman, hit subscribe, and get ready to enjoy the most epic fishing adventures in the world. This has been the Telltale Fisherman Podcast. Thanks for sharing another great tale with us. Be sure to check out the show notes page for more info on today's show and the gear we talked about. Keep those lines tight and we'll catch you next time right here on the Telltale Fisherman Podcast.